1995, uh, we were talking just before we got on here. We had, um, you, you lose quite a bit from 94, quite a bit of players, veteran guys. Uh, talk about maybe that off season coming into the, to the year of, of, uh, you know, looking to get in the playoffs again. Um, you've been out for two years, right? 93, 94, trying to get, get back in the mix. Um, looking for a six straight city title would be the goal. Um, what, what's your thoughts coming into the off season? What are you looking at changing, keeping the same? Who's new on the scene? Well, you know, coming off of, we, we felt, you know, just, uh, uh, missing the playoffs by a hair. Uh, and having a really good year, I talked about uh, being close to having an undefeated season by just a handful of points. Um, but, you know, the reality was we were losing 10, 11 quality seniors, all city kids uh, um, that were, you know, the, the, the backbone of that 94 team. So coming in to 95, you know, was really a rebuilding deal uh, for us. Even though we had, we we thought, uh, you know, a handful of top-notch players coming in. But, you know, again, when you deal in reality, you lose a two-year starter at quarterback uh, in Ron Warga. So you got a sophomore, Antoine Floyd, coming in, uh, who you're expecting big things out of, but he's a you know, any way you look at it, he's a sophomore. Right. Um, so uh, John Cook coming back. Mike's, Mike Klingscale is starting to, you know, develop and show signs. We're excited about uh, uh, him uh, and and his future. And uh, Ron Winfrey. And, and two, two guys that were really, I think, the backbone of that 95 team. Um, uh, that that really excelled for us was Robert Bailey and Jim Coolis. Um Both uh, both were really good, tough, hard nosed football players. Um, and um, so you know we were guardedly optimistic, but realistically knowing that we had had uh, quite a task in front of us. The other thing <clears throat> that you didn't mention was uh, the coaching staff. Uh, you lose, you lose Mikovich. Yes, from the '94 season, uh, he ends up going down to Florida for a number of years. And uh, what did what did that do for you? Because I know that when he came back, you know, minus Pope, he was your go-to guy. And I think Pope Pope allowed you to to not stay out of the defense, but um, you knew you didn't have to go over there and, and, and corral a, a, a game plan on a Saturday, right? You Maybe you have a conversation or talk about something. The defense was in good hands with Pope. So I'm assuming Mick kind of helped you on the offensive side. He did, uh, He and, and, and he helped Pope too. There's no question, you know, Mick was, was a, a, a big hit to our staff when he left. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, filling that void was, was, uh, you know, was going to take some adjusting. Um, because as you say, you know, I mean, Mick and I were, um, I was his position coach as an assistant the year before I took, took over. Um, and, uh, you know, we were, we were together, uh, from, from 88, uh, up until uh, 94. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's no question. I, he, he, he was uh, an integral part of the staff, and, and uh, losing him was, was, was a real um, uh, issue that, that, that we knew we, we, we'd have to deal with. It, it's, uh, you know, we were talk as you're talking, I'm thinking, you know, from 88 to 94. 87 to 94. That's, 87, yeah. You know, that's six, seven years, but that's not six or seven seasons. Meaning, 
you know, that's almost every day that you're seeing oh, these guys yeah, yeah, yeah. in the off season, right? Yeah. Um, that's that's uh, like you said, that's an integral part, a key thing. Um, so who do you remember who you moved up or what you did there? Because because you got Pope, uh, you got Zelensky, um, you got Mills. Bill Miller, Steve Zelensky, Dan Cipriano, and Lamangi still, yeah, uh, there, yeah. Um, and then you got uh, looks like you got Chris Samarone and Vivacqua, either JVs or freshmen, right? And I, I, how uh, how I think we we, we uh, adjusted to you know mixed departure was um, I moved uh, uh, Mills to. Uh, the secondary, okay. Um, to to uh, coaching the secondary, um, and uh, as far as the offensive end, um, you know, I, who would have went on the phones with you? Was Mick on the phones with you at that time? Mick was Mick. No, Mick was Mick was on the sideline. It, uh, to be honest with you. Um, Joe Lutze might have been on the phone, oh, okay. phones with me. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, now when when Mick came back, um, uh, after uh, his uh, his run at Jackson Milton, um, he was on the phones with me. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, and your uncle Red uh, was was for a time on the phones. Um, so we, uh, you know, and, and, and there, the, you know, there, there, there was no offensive staff and defensive staff. I sure. mean, you know, we were all, we were all on, on the same, same deal there. Um, and, uh, but, 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 but as we said, there's, there's no question, you know, Mick not being, being there, uh, created a void and, and um, uh, I don't I I'll be honest I don't know that we hired someone per se to replace him I think we just shuffled some guys around okay we move that mic up a little bit closer. and 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 if you know if to 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 fill the, <clears throat> the void um, you know we, we probably brought you know it, somebody in on uh, the lower level staff. Sure. Okay. So, uh, you looking at the team picture here, you have, looks like a little bit smaller. I think I counted like 43, 45 guys. Um, and, uh, you know, going through, going through doubles. What are you kind of thinking going into week one against Fitch? Well, again, the the psychology of uh, of all that, of of how that played out, you got to figure. You know, ninety one is is your or ninety is your arrival. Ninety one is your breakout year. Ninety two is a record breaking year. Ninety three, you know, is is a solid year. But I mean, you're expecting better things. Yeah. Uh, same same with 94 both good years um but you know disappointing that you're not in the playoffs right okay so that that's where you are i think mentally as a staff that your expectations were up now you're you're you're, you're searching for answers as far as why can't we get back to the dance so to speak yeah um and you know you're looking for ways, and you're trying to amp up your off season. Uh, but in answer to your question, uh, the anticipation going into uh, the Fitch game, which was the opener, was um, you know we lost a lot, but you know how how uh, the attitude is. It's like you know getting this opener could could set the tone for for a great year.
You play like champions, you win. You play like champions, you win. You go there and you play sloppy and you get intimidated. That's why I told you before, change. Underneath the banner, underneath 90 and 94, I told you, I looked you right in the eye and I told you, the time for you to become a man is today. Not next year, not next week, not week 10, today. We need you to become a man. Don't overestimate what's on the other side of the ball. They're going to play hard, and they're going to play like Indians, until you give them a reason not to. With 48 minutes, you're taking the first step to number six. It's going to come down to one thing. What are you going to do now? How bad do you want it? Let's go. Yo, go, go, go.
you know, Wooster, I have no idea about Wooster or yeah. what they were. Or, but you lose that one 14 7. What was, how was that game? You know, like I was telling you earlier, uh, my memories are, are sitting around and, and, just not having a good feeling about I don't I don't know whether it was the atmosphere or what, but just not having a, about being ready to play. Cook had a big day, uh, you know. Looking back at at, at the article, um, uh, you know, and you know another player that 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 uh, was uh, all Northeastern Ohio for us and, and and had a great year. Nick Jaminet. Mm. Um, uh, uh, Eddie Zupko. I mean, all these guys were were um, getting better and better as the, as the the year progressed, and and really became outstanding football players for us. Um, the the particular Worcester game again. I I I, I remember there there being. A good solid back that they had and uh, causing us some problems, but uh, the thing that stands out to most to me is that feeling that sitting around period that you know I just didn't think we were ready to play and and you know and that's that's on that's on me that you know you, you got to be ready to play I mean it, but. It, I don't know why that that comes back at me, but I think it was a game that we thought um, we could win, and mm -hmm. it got away from us. Yeah, um, <clears throat> that's uh, that's kind of an awkward trip. It's not. It's 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 long, but it's not long enough to kind of get down there early, or it it it, it probably. You don't make it very often. It just this. It it's it's not part of your regular routine, or it's a change up to the process. You know, uh, there's a side story to to Worcester. The the last time I was in Worcester was uh, as as a player at Mount Union. We were undefeated, and we go to Worcester mm -hmm. um, on a Saturday afternoon. I mean, and uh, we lose and it was like number one we were blowing everybody out we had no thoughts of losing them they upset us keeps us out of the the stag bowl hmm. uh, and uh so so uh, hmm. that that's that, that that's way the name worcester is weighing on me because yeah. I, I always associate that with, with that but uh, there you go maybe that was uh part of your funky feeling before the game could be you know could be but but like i said i do remember we had a law for some reason maybe maybe we got there and i'm 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 pretty on the money minute wise with my itineraries yeah right right <laughs> right 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 so then you get in the city uh you beat wilson um any memories of playing wilson and how how they were was there any yeah, I think I think they were pretty good because uh, I, I, I we didn't blow any blow them out, and you know I think what they smelled more than anything was, hey, we got Cheney for the first time in six years coming in, um, maybe doubting themselves. Sure, mm -hmm. you know, and. Uh, uh, this is, this is, and, and we're having a decent year and, uh, they got one win under their belt and, and, uh, you know, we could get them. Mm -hmm. So that, you know how that confidence level goes and, and they come in full confidence. Our kids may be starting to doubt themselves. And, uh, you know, I think that's, that's when, you earn your stripes as a coach when you you got to get when 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 their dauber is two inches from the ground and you got to convince them and that's why I keep going back to that remembering in practice and that that's when I remember um, putting Coors and Bailey as 
you know, like on stage saying, you know, we're going to go as these guys go. Okay. Mm -hmm. And these are our guys and, and they might've even spoke up at the time and said, you know, you either jump on board with us or, you know, get out because, you know, you know, we're going, we're going after this. Yeah. East Liverpool, you go down to East Liverpool, Potter country, you win 22 to 12. Um, what was it like going down on the river? Not, not to Steubenville guy that, that, that we used to scrim uh, against, uh, Bob fair. He was, uh, the hat down there. And, uh, um, I, I you know, I had the utmost respect for him. In, in his program, he's an East Liverpool guy, and um, go going there is was a challenge mm -hmm. scrimmaging, and it was certainly a challenge back to when Ed was coaching, and uh, they had a kid that I want to say his name was Ernie Washington, a great mm -hmm. back. In '74, they went down there, and they were raining. Uh, mm. They dropped uh, some uh, pamphlets from from an airplane, you know, about beat, beating undefeated Cheney, and and uh, um, so East Liverpool was, you know, was uh, I guess that, that that'll always be associated with that. But but uh, you know, again, you're on the road. It's an hour bus, and. Um, you 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 better go down there, be ready to play, and and our kids did a great job. Yeah, I remember when <clears throat> when we would scrimmage them and and, and uh, either go down there. One year we even had a scrimmage up in uh, at YSU. Yeah. Um, and uh, they were just tough. This yeah. Is, uh, very yeah. similar to what we were bringing to the table. Yep. At that time, just really tough, coached well, physical. Um, and, and I, I just remember that being a real tough, tough scrimmage, not necessarily seeing some exotic offense or defense, but right, you better right. come to play. You better come to play. Absolutely. So then you finish up with, with rain and East. And one of the things that I was, that I found kind of interesting in, in the rain game was uh, they talk about uh, Bugsovich. So obviously you're starting to get some younger guys playing Bugsovich getting a hit on, on Crenshaw. Um, <laughs> and if you, you know, not, not too many, well, I shouldn't say you don't hear about a guy like Sam Crenshaw now, but during that time, he was a heck of a player. Yes, he was. And ends up he ends up going to Penn State. Penn State. Um, do you have any memories of either preparing for him or uh, I'm trying to think that would have been maybe his junior year, Crenshaw's junior year. He was not. He was not. Uh, were they throwing the ball around? Were they trying to find some creative ways to get the ball? Do you remember anything offensively that they might have been doing with him? <laughs> I don't. It, it, I, I, 
it would seem to me that that uh, in '95 um, they were probably still doing the bone. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Who would have took took over for Turco? Um, Pete Limber, maybe. Ah, uh, Limber. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And he was, and they were struggling. Uh, you know, they they had a boatload of talent, and, uh, and, and Pete had coached at YSU. Um, uh, he, he had helped helped there, um, but uh, he 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 was struggling to to, to fit in there. Um, and uh, I, what was the score in that game? I it was fourteen uh, zero. Yeah, fourteen nothing. So, uh, you know, t- I mean, relatively tight game. Yeah, doesn't really give a lot of detail on whether you had opportunities or right, right. whatever. But I don't know, you know if that's the and it it could be. I mean, you know, it's a lot of years ago, and um, I I recall the, the one time when uh, it was rainy and and uh, really cold mm-hmm. and. We came out to warm up, and they didn't come out. They warmed up in the gym, uh, and and you know our kids are rolling around uh, and getting acclimated to to the elements. And uh, you know when rain came out, they were kind of like, <laughs> "How do you how do you justify that as a coach?" And I don't know who the coach was there, what year it was, but how do you how do you do that? I, 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 you, you have lost I, 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 right I'm, there. Yeah. Right. Game over. I'm guessing, I'm guessing you, and I don't, I don't recall who the coach was either, but I'm guessing it, it came down to, Hey, you guys want to warm up inside or outside? And they're like in, um, <laughs> and okay. You know, oh, I mean, God. so the mistake becomes, Giving them a choice. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I mean, who would have? I to me, it's like it would have never. It would have never occurred anywhere that I've ever been. It would have never occurred that sure. that was a possibility. You know what I mean? So it's not like well, there's a choice or not a choice. Like who would ever have thought that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, the obvious tells you. Well, you're going to play in it in 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 twenty minutes. You know. So yeah, may, get used to it. Maybe they just knew what was about to occur. Let's stay for I'm a couple guessing, minutes. I'm guessing warm. it was defended. It would it would be defended by saying, "Well, uh, I didn't want to expose my kids to any more of the harsh elements than they had to be." That's but that's, I, that sounds like a modern modern day type <laughs> of. Uh, Come on. Yeah, I guess. Oh, when you were kids, man, you were always outside playing football yeah. in the snow. And... Well, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I could remember at Holy Name looking out the windows, recess coming up, and, you know, you'd see like two or three snowflakes coming down saying, it's tackle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And there might not even, there might be a partial coating on, on the blacktop. And they're like, hey. Snowing. We're good. <laughs> um, so uh, next, you go to East twenty. You win at East twenty-seven to seven. Do you uh, do you have any memories of that game? I, I, again, I I, I don't. Uh, nothing nothing jumps out at me. But, but I, I other than knowing East. Had a lot of talent. So you go down to Brook, either 87, 88, one time, not twice, right? You lose 3 nothing, I think. Yes. And then this year you go down there again. Uh, and Brook at one point was the team in the state of West Virginia. Absolutely. How did you how did you end up getting that game on your schedule? Yeah. It was probably Bud uh soliciting. Uh, Bud Billard was the coach okay. and, and uh 
he's he he was a legend down there and and uh um I'm sure like Dick uh Angle and Ursuline, you know, he he's out looking for mm -hmm. you know opponents and you know we're people weren't li lining up to play us. I mean Sure. You know, we right. had our our, our automatics with you know, Fitch and Boardman and Camel um, in the city. But, um, you know, you're, you're going down to Steubenville and playing their socks off. You're going down to uh, uh, Brook and playing their socks off. So, you know, the reputation is, you know, they're an up-and-coming team. To answer your question, um they're looking. Ed's the AD at the time. He's looking, and you know. Yeah, I guess I guess the thing from from uh, you know, particularly at that point schedule. If you're looking at playoffs, and okay, you know our goal is to win our conference championship and to make the playoffs. It's tough to make the playoffs when you're playing Fitch, Boardman. You know. Maybe not two of the best teams in the state, but two top programs, right? In Northeastern Ohio, in the area, in playoffs, always in the conversation. And then, um, you know, Brooke. Like, to me, that just kind of seems like, you know, it's, it's a difficult – because a field goal difference, an extra point. But the, the margin for error is so small with that type of schedule, it's tough. And I know the trap always is, well, if you want to – you know, you want to be the best, you got to play the best. Well, I mean, I get that, but, you know. It it it, it, it probably come, came down to then. I don't know how much, because it was, it, it wasn't part of uh, the past or, 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 or even expectation that playoffs, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was more about, the contract more about the guarantee what you know what 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 kind of guarantee are you getting I, and brooks i'm sure brooks uh thoughts were i don't care if you don't bring anybody you know cuz cuz you know we'll we'll fill it up we'll fill the stadium you know yeah. we'll make our money so when you say guarantee what kind of money they what kind of cut of the gate they're going to give you for coming correct. out i got you correct yeah that's okay. you know and 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 that's exactly why you know there was never a home and home, even when we were using YSU with Fitch, mm -hmm. because you know Fitch said, "Okay, well, they win a fifty-fifty deal." Okay, and our attitude, um, the administration's attitude was, "Well, you know, why they're, they're not going to come to YSU?" Okay. Okay, the Fitch people aren't, you know, we're we're not going to have as big a gate right. as we would there, and and so it 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 wasn't practical for them, it, and, until I went in, you know, and it they were they weren't happy. But I'm saying, I go in and uh, and say, well, listen, you know, because it came time to re up the contract, and Fitch is starting to hedge. They're starting to say, well. You know, we know that you're going to come to our place, and we got to get off of this 50-50 gate, okay? Um, and and I'm 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 saying, well, we need to get in the home and home with Fitch, uh, and uh, the attitude was, well, we can't uh, because they'll they'll drop us. Mm -hmm. I said, well, get get Dick on the phone right now. Kenny on the phone right now and tell him um, that, okay, if we don't go home and home, we're going to drop you. And I guarantee you he'll sign the contract. And, you know, they, they didn't, they didn't want to risk that. So they, they ended up agreeing until they just recently got out. Um, but they ended up, uh, Cheney ended up agreeing to going to, um, Whatever percentage they worked out, mm. but it favored it obviously favored Fitch. You know, that, I mean, the, the the politics of it. 
you think about it like negotiating that. You think about like, geez, we can't afford to lose the game. You know, sitting on the Cheney side. The flip side is, you're going to be the guy over at Fitz that says we're not bringing him in. Come on. Yeah. You know, right, it, right. 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 You right. know, there's there's two sides of that coin. Um, but sometimes it's easier just to kind of get the deal done. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Right. Right. And it doesn't right. make it the right way. Uh, but. I remember we played Fitch at, you know, at Ursuline. I mean, one night we played him on a Thursday. We packed it, you know, packed it. I mean, it's, it's, people would come, people would come, you know, and oh, I think that's what's best for your kids. Absolutely. A- you know? Absolutely. Uh, but, but it was all about, you know, yeah. No, I got that's you. That's a I road I don't even want you to know, go down. I, I get it. But it, it, it's, you know, it's, it's a little bit easier just to say, I don't have to worry about manning this concession stand and workers and take it to and all that stuff. And and if you feel like, well, you know what, we're getting a fair deal, and you know that's probably how it how it went down. But it was it'd be the same thing with Boardman and Camel. Yeah, Brooke, you know, seventeen to seven down there. Uh, another, you know, tight one. I mean, yeah, it was tight, and and, and you're a hundred percent right. I mean, that they, they, they were they were rolling then. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, they 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 were uh, they were going, and uh, you know, I mean, we played them again the following year, and and needed it was the tenth game, and to, okay. I was going to say they, they did you, I knew you played them to be undefeated, so I was assuming it was that that following year. So you got a yeah, two year contract with them. Uh, going down there was was quite a. Quite an event. Yeah, you had to set up halftime in the tennis court <sighs> because it was such a walk to back to the locker room where they housed you. So, and, and they told you that up front. Yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty intimidating. When we first went down to scout, uh, Brooke, you know, and you're coming into town, and it's a, it's an old fashioned West Virginia river town, and. Um, you they know, get the signs up on the signs of the players yeah. are up, uh, decorating the buildings and and Friday nights town shuts down mm-hmm. and everybody puts their green and gold on and goes out to uh, the uh, the stadium. I wonder who came. We, up. <laughs> sorry to interrupt you, but we we went down to Scott one time and it was they stopped the game. Uh, it was just a torrential downpour. I mean, it was thunder, lightning, and it was pouring. And we were hu- hunkered down under a concession stand. Um, and you know what? The the uh, Brook faithful were in the middle of that 50-yard <laughs> line. They didn't move. The, the, their green and gold parkas came out, and they just... Hunkered down and weathered the storm until the game started again. Oh man, I wonder who had had the idea first: Steubenville for the fire breathing horse, or Brooke for the fire breathing Bruin, or whatever <laughs> bear they had down there. Yeah, yeah. But Bud Bud, Bud Billard, the coach there, he he was a character. He was a character. Um. So all city, John Cook, uh. Ron Winfrey, Jimmy Coolis, Robert Bailey, Nick Jaminette, Mike Klinkscale, and Antoine Floyd. That, that's a that, that that's a hell of an all city group. I mean, every every guy that you mentioned there. I mean, no no question. And you know, so you you think about um, going into the year. And you know, you know John Cook. Yeah. Okay. And, and you know Ron Winfrey. Mm-hmm. And and you know Nick Jaminette. Um, but the other guys developed. Right. I mean, they all became, I, I think, great players. Yeah. Um, all Northeastern Ohio. Um, Cook, Bailey, Jaminette, Coolis, and then all state. John Cook, Jimmy Coolis. That's uh, that's that's pretty impressive. What was uh, 
how, what's the process for getting guys on all state? Maybe just talk a little bit about that. That's that, that that's all reporter. reporter. You, you you know you you send a list mm-hmm. of and then they 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 have votes and they they lobby okay yeah. and and uh, but you you don't have any control other than you know so I, I'll I would send I think Toter was would have been the guy at the time Rob Toter. And I would send him maybe five names that I thought were all state, and who he he rates them uh, compared to the other guys in the area that that uh, his beat covers, and uh, uh, then you know he he votes. Um, yeah. So it's just kind of your presentation of the stats and the narrative and your profile yeah okay but um, he I, i'll be a hundred percent honest i mean i could i could have probably it it's not like uh anything's validated i could have said antoine threw 50 touchdown passes in 95 and he um you know threw for four thousand yards and then there, at that time, at least, they weren't looking at numbers or anything. Like they were looking at names, okay, and how that name resonated uh, to the other players in the area. I got you. So, not necessarily football guys making the decision. Correct. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts on on this? Uh... 1995 season uh like i said resiliency is probably the best one one word to describe that team um and um development would be the the the, the next best word um resiliency because they weathered you know they weathered uh A horrible start, mm-hmm. and uh, finished strong. Um, even though you know Brooke got away from him, but finished strong and players developed uh, from good players to to outstanding players. I think a, a, a good number of them. And uh, I, you know, I I look at ninety five, five and four. Okay. Um, and I, I'm trying to figure out why we would have played nine games. I'm just—I was just thinking that myself. Where, where that? There might have been a strike in there. <laughs> <laughs> I would not be surprised if there was not a strike in there. Yeah, there weren't dates on there. I'd have to go back and like actually cross-reference and, the dates and, of the and, articles. And I'll—I'll I'll tell you what—what what school would jumps out at me as as being a p- potential is is Hubbard. Mm. Okay. That was usually later in the season, wasn't it? Or uh, yeah. Later on towards Yeah, cuz we when when we beat him in 97. So you're saying Hubbard might have went on strike. No, no. You're I'm saying, saying might have missed that game. We might have missed that game. I got you. I'll I'll do a little homework and find that one out. We'll we'll look into that yeah. one. Um yeah, you know, it's one of those things where ball bounces a certain way in a game and you end up going uh 5 and 4 or 6 and 3 or 7 and 2. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um but uh, you know, think about it. You you the the players that you lose um Is is becomes as big a hit as you took in '94, just sure. about. Um, because, yeah, right, right. Because you know you got Clink coming back, you got Antoine coming back, which is a pretty good, good, good way to start. Um, uh, Bill Sicarelli and Craig Lynn are are, are both playing at, at the time. Um, uh, you know they they. They're coming in and but but you know you're losing Cook and Bailey and Jaminette and 
cool is um uh, winfrey uh, you're losing some really good football players and you know and uh coming into 96 we had you know i'm i'm not going to start us off here but we we had good expectations and it it turned into being a banner yeah year. you know as a little follow up for the 1995 season are there any other thoughts that that you had on maybe some players i know one one that i was thinking about maybe you can touch a little bit on um you know was was jason haggerty who i think and i forget his role but i know when i was coaching with you he was down there with like pete coma i don't know if if he was a d coordinator um with bobby joe gessler i can't quite remember the dynamics um but he was down at volney correct and um I, I'm I'm not sure if he took over. I believe he did. I can't remember the timeline now. But uh, yeah, I, I I am so glad that that because I I would be completely remiss if I didn't mention Jason Haggerty. You know, really a good player for us and, and a program kid, and uh, you know evolved into. He was so program evolved into one of our coaches and and. Uh, did did a phenomenal job down there. Um, yeah, and and I think that was always one of the things that we talked about. Um, you know, let's be honest. Me coming from Ursuline, you know, you always know that there's that there's an element of, um, you know, guys lurking for your players. <laughs> um, sp- you know, and sp- specifically at the junior high level, right? Um, so. And that was a conversation we always had was, and I felt like it's one thing if a kid's in junior high and somebody's talking to him, I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but you know, okay, we can, we can battle that. And I always said, we have to recruit those guys, which I think you did a great job of having champions down at the middle school at Volney promoting the program and champions. I mean, Gessler's Haggerty coma, your guys promoting the program. Um, what are your thoughts on having those guys down there, not just installing your offense and defense and philosophy, but promoting the program? Well, it's absolutely key. I mean, uh, uh, those guys, yeah, from from the Gesslers to, to Pete and Jason, um, uh, they – the, the job that they did and, and, and we intertwined with them. Okay. So we would, we would, and you know, this, we would bring them to our games. They would be our sideline guys. Uh, the, the kids, I mean, we had a, we, we had a bus, we'd feed mm-hmm. them afterwards. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we, w- they were, you know, they were, they were our feeder. They, they, they uh, and we knew that, um, the development of kids within our program started certainly on 